This study traces the discursive struggles in the 2005 American Girl controversy, charting some new business discourse dynamics and illustrating how the hegemonic struggle over meaning makes social change appear possible in the market. We know that in order to succeed in emerging markets, corporations have to build relationships with diverse audiences, but this effort is often fraught with potential conflict. Ting Tumi's work on cultural ethnic identity negotiation, which is also known as space negotiation theory, can provide a framework for us to understand the dynamics of conflict management as it takes place between, within, and across cultures. I'll use her model of global conflict management styles to clarify the discursive and ideological tensions that ensued in American Girls' 2005 ICANN campaign. Dessert 2 was the first to use the term strategic rating to describe popular consumption practices. In other words, he describes consumers plundering or poaching the meaning of a text in order to supplement it with their own preferred understanding. According to Jenkins' study on subcultural fan communities, one element fan communities share is a concern with consistency in meaning. Fans insist on consistency of detail across a program and between programs. Fan criticism often involves filling in the gaps, overcoming inconsistency, and rendering the text amenable to the community's preferred reading. For communities that value consistency, changes often create tension. When in August 2005, American Girl partnered with Girls Inc., a nonprofit organization committed to social change, the conservative segment of the American Girl fan community protested that Girls Inc. supported abortion and lesbianism. American Girl's temporary partnership with Girls Inc. was for a cause marketing campaign to help provide programs for girls to develop skills in the areas of science, math, leadership, athleticism, and team spirit by way of the proceeds from its ICANN bracelets. One opponent in the partnership was so distraught, she urged the Pro-Life Action League to protest, and both the League and the American Family Association encouraged American Girl fans to protest and even boycott the corporation's products effectively poaching the meaning of the partnership by framing the event in terms of moral authority. As Ting Tumi suggests, people from individualistic cultures tend to place relatively more emphasis on negative base needs compared with individuals from collectivist cultures. There is a cultural preference to be free from impositions, which is in essence a desire to be independent. The conservative fans read the partnership as an imposition on their moral authority. For example, during the 2005 campaign, in response to a fashion show fundraising event sponsored by American Girl for, chi for a children's charity, Father Frank Mallory, a spokesperson for a Roman Catholic school in Brookfield, Wisconsin, stated, It's a bargain. We'll just have to pass up. The cost is too high. Our integrity isn't for sale. Here, economic metaphors invoke the frame of moral authority by directing the conversation around a cultural orientation that measures value outcomes between self and other needs and finds personal integrity a more valuable commodity than charitable profit. The language reveals an individualist orientation, emphasizing personal integrity over charitable service. Base concerns take precedence since the charitable event imposes upon personal integrity. And religious ideology overrides the complexity of questioning a theory of personal integrity that is structured around oppositions of good and evil. By contrast, collectivist cultures emphasize positive faith, presenting themselves as likable, cooperative, and interested in building relationships. Those fans who read the partnership as one in which building of relationships was vital to sustaining the company and to securing global relationships align themselves with the cultural orientation and faith concerns of the collectivist vision. Progressive fans frame their discussion around service. One young mother interviewed by the early show national correspondent Hattie Kaufman reported, from what I understand, the Girls Inc. organization is after school programming and educational programming for girls who really need that, and to me, the overall message is a positive one. For progressive fans, the campaign was framed in terms of its service to the community. This frame is not inconsistent with the corporation's philanthropy statement. American Girl maintains a long-standing commitment to children's charities nationwide, including support for education, literacy, environmental awareness, multicultural appreciation, and the fine arts. We've helped generate millions of dollars for programs designed to benefit children through innovative partnerships. As Ting Tumi notes, collectivism promotes relational interdependence, in-group harmony, and in-group collaborative spirit. For progressive fans, the discourse of change was consistent with the philanthropy statement and the vision of helping to improve the lives of girls. 
They applied values to the partnership, the same values American Girl applies in its service to numerous charitable organizations. For progressive fans, the campaign was an exercise in positive faith, building relationships through service. American Girl's conflict management style is a result of its cultural orientation and faith concerns as well. American Girl framed its October 14, 2005 statement in terms of principle. We are profoundly disappointed that certain groups have chosen to misconstrue American Girl's purely altruistic efforts and turn them into a broader political statement on issues that we as a corporation have no position. This statement doesn't critique the pro-life position. Instead, the words purely altruistic speak out in defense of the welfare of others and frame the conversation around the integrity of the democratic American principle. Americans believe in working together to improve the quality of life. The conversation about principle, as opposed to a policy position, directs the debate toward the importance of action over words and toward a collectivist orientation and positive face work. In 2009, the controversy over the homeless doll sparked another debate about inclusion, which illustrates the most recent example of what Jenkins observed as the strategic rating of a corporatist mass distributed text. Conservatives strategically rated the inclusion of the homeless doll. Andrea Pazer of the New York Post called the inclusion of the doll an all-out political indoctrination and political preaching, once again invoking the frame of policy as opposed to principle. In both the 2005 and 2009 cases, conservative fans attacked American Girl for what it read as a discourse of change. Conservative fans expected the corporation to correct what they read or experienced as a face-threatening act. For those fans, or for these fans, face work would have necessitated an apology from American Girl and a dissociation from Girls Inc. However, with their statement, American Girl chose to work with what Ting Tumi labels mutual face concerns, the recognition of self and other needs. In releasing statement that elucidates the corporation's refusal refusal to be defined by the conservative segment of its fans, and that speaks to the importance of the welfare of others, the corporation was exercising mutual face concerns. Ting Tumi's theoretical model can clarify our understanding of how cultural orientation and face concerns influence not only popular consumption and corporate production practices, but management conflict responses. Her model can also elucidate the values and principles that underlie policies and programs. Since the presidential election of Barack Obama, the nation seems to have embraced collectivist values and principles at some level affirming social change. Conversations like those about repealing policies that discriminate on the basis of sexual orientation, expanding hate crime protection, increasing environmental protection invoke the frame of social responsibility that reflects the collectivist worldview. The market seems to have picked up on this discourse of social responsibility. Corporate social responsibility appears to be trendy in marketing campaigns today, with corporations nominally embracing this new collectivist orientation as evidenced in the BP Corporation before the spill. However, BP's early denial of its massive underwater oil spill illustrates that the transformation needed extends far beyond repackaging of ideas or the rephrasing of marketing slogans. For social change to occur, corporate social responsibility must be more than lip service. As a corporation, American Girl seemed to adopt innovative practices and within limits to influence others to accept social change. The corporation's concern with the inclusion of cultures that traditionally have been marginalized is a step toward becoming sensitized to the global market and social change. Its managing of the campaign controversy was a result of embracing that worldview and its values, and its decision to partner with Girls Inc. signifies a need for building relationships within, between, and across cultures.